Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Valagar Alavane, back for some more Dungeons and Dragons Online. So here we are again, back in the harbor for our final part of the Harbingers of Madness chain. Uh, now the quest giver is Hector Hyssop. And it even says the final edition. And this quest is in the flesh. Now we are joined again by Shira. Uh, as honestly this quest, it's got a really cool end fight mechanic. That being said, I hate it. <laughs> and you'll definitely see why once we get in. So, we're going to step in. We're going to get some buffs going. And then we'll be uh, getting this show on the road. So, the first thing here, again, it kind of puts you in a starter room. Just some breakables, but there is a door, so there's no actual enemies right away. However, once we open that door, everything's about to start. So here we go. So as soon as you open the door, you'll see a whole bunch of Thrak Hounds, Mind Flayers. Like it really just jumps right into it. And you'll also hear the giant Mind Flayer, Yolthun. Uh, that's basically who they have narrating the quest as kind of he's inside your mind he's a mind flayer all right as you kill everyone we're gonna move to our east And I do want to point out, make sure to check around corners as often you will come across, you know, guys hiding around them or just even just breakables there as well. So the main part of this quest is fairly simple. It's kind of a just a standard beat down type deal. Now, as you see, if you walk up next to the statues, they do become alive. Alright, so let's get them up. Yeah, I definitely, if you are doing this, this is another one of those quests that I definitely recommend actually coming in with a proper healer. Um, as you can see, hirelings, they just, they don't always cut it. Alright, so heading in, you're going to come across this section here in the north. Now, there actually is a kind of an optional located in here as well. So... If you kind of hug the walls here, there's actually going to be a part that doesn't have a wall and allows you to hop into the water. Once into the water, you need to head swim east. Now again, this is optional. You don't have to come in here. Uh, heading east, it will have a secret door and some traps. Now the traps are giant blade traps. And what you need to do is kind of swim through them and as you can see traps about halfway once you get that you do want to swim all the way out and you're gonna fight these guys and then we're actually going to have a puzzle now, a lot of people don't really know how to solve this puzzle, and they just end up turning kind of them willy-nilly. But the objective is, okay, if you look in here, the way this is set up, at the bottom it has, or sorry, we'll start here. On the left, we have three wheels. We need to turn three wheels 
to this red diamond for a total of six lights. So you kind of got to do a little bit of math. And if you look at each wheel, they do have a number. So we could do two. But you also have to make that symbol there. So if we actually did... Uh, that one. So we'll start with... Oh. Top center. We're going to need... Well, let's just go with these. So we got three. Turn this one here. We've got... This guy here will turn. Four, five. This guy can't be. He's kind of already on it, so we just got to turn it off. And then finally, we're going to need one more. There we go. So, three, four, five, six. And the rest got to be turned off. So it's a simple puzzle, but again, if you don't know how, it can definitely cause you a lot of trouble. Now, once you have your loot, that's it. Go ahead and swim back out. Um, so the amount of wheels will change. I've had it as, as high as four. And the same with the amount of light bulbs that will light up. So you can't just light the same ones that I lit up and ex have it work out. It literally changes time to time. So another thing you'll notice as we kind of went through this a little bit, a couple of these guys spawned in behind us. So you do got to be aware that once you reach the corner, it will spawn guys behind you. I definitely recommend taking them out before moving deeper just to avoid all the extra damage there. You also notice these guys. Now, if you have blast type damage, you can actually hurt them because they are living creatures. So, I mean, it is dealer's choice if you want to sit back and blast them while they're still on the other side of the screen. Now, the benefits of this is this will eventually break when you proceed far enough in. By killing them now, you just don't got to deal with them later. So it's safer. But again, time consuming. So there we are. Proceeded past. They broke it open and rather than having three, we only have one. All right, so there they are. Now we want to head north. All right. Oh, there he is. Honestly, I'm forgetting where we're supposed to go now. I want to say that you're actually supposed to head on through here, but there's nowhere to go. So yeah, it could be, no, oh, do we just, oh, we do. All right, so I was right, but the door doesn't open. You got to smash it down again. I do apologize for that. It has been a very long time since I've run this quest. So in here, we're going to have more enemies. As we approach the stairs, it's going to start an onslaught for us. Once we survive the onslaught, it's then going to open the door up top and spawn in kind of like a big bad mini boss. So it's nothing major, but you do got to sit here for a little bit and kill off a few of them.
So as you can see, it is a few waves. You also notice the waves are starting to get a little bit larger. Now having two coming out of these side ones rather than just the one. And I believe there's one more wave. So super simple it's just time consuming at this point there we go and at the end we got a big old beholder so chaos beholder no anti-magic field, so yay us. At that point, we do want to head up through here. Got some statues on the side. And then it allows us to grab some loot. So go ahead and grab your loot from the beholder. Once you have that, you actually want to just head up and around the corners and it will allow you to run around the edge. Now again, more enemies, but it does give you a nice little shrine if you require it. So again, you have some guys kind of, you know, some weird old statues. It's very, well, insane. Now at this point, it does place you on the top of the section we were at with the water. If you happen to fall, you'll just have to run back around. Now our objective here is we need to actually pick up that crest. Now in order to pick up the crest, we do need to head over to the southern section. And you can proceed through the door here to the south. And you're going to want to continue off to the east all the way around. Now I do recommend going through and killing all the trash as you don't want it to sneak up on you there. So once you've done that, head to the north. Kind of got these guys. Now, at this point, this is where you can pick up your crest that is, again, required. As well, you'll notice here behind this door, we do have a secret door. Now, in here, we actually have a very, very tough optional. Or at least... Oh, this is the optional. 
All right, so for this one, just want to kind of hop. First one is safe. Get our control panel. And we can hop. Now we do got a second control panel, which will disable these ones. There we go. Pull our lever. That will actually make it a little bit more solid, allowing people to get across easier. And here we go. So this is not the optional I thought it was. And yeah, so fight them down. Uh, mind Once the mind flare dies, the barrier drops. Showing your lockbox. Just extra loot. And then again, head on out of the closet. And apparently lag on the way. All right. So now that you have the crest, we do need to head back to the other room. And as you can see, we do have a couple of respawns. This is a main reason why you want to clear the path as you're going. Because if you're having to deal with both the respawns and the old enemies because you never killed them, that is a lot to deal with typically when these enemies are a little bit tougher. All right, so now that we have our crest, we can actually head off to the eastern section and head on in here. Now when you do, you'll notice guy spawns in right behind us. And we just want to head in a little bit farther here. This is the optional I was thinking about. Alright, so these guys here, we got some brutal guards. But then we actually have a sign. Now if you look at the sign, it does say warning. Clicking on the sign will give you a little bit more information. There's an angry soul within. Extreme challenge. Balance party is recommended. Now, I'm going to give it a go. Worst case scenario, we're going to party wait. So we're going to ignore the warning and head in the door. At this point, it spawns in this big old guy. Now, he is an undead beholder. And as you can see, he's got 16,000 hit points. Now we can start fighting him from out here and actually just drag him right out here. So, a lot less painful if you're fighting him from out here as he doesn't know how to path to you. So, if you are fighting in this room, however, I do want to mention he is an absolute menace. Though there is no anti-magic field for him, just the overall damage that he does and the fact that you're enclosed in a small area, it is a very, very difficult fight. But, easy like that. Then we can head on in. Get our breakables and get our loot. So for this one, if you are melee, good luck. If you're ranged, just back up. All right. So from this point, we're actually almost completed. All we got to do is head through our door a little bit. And here we go. So this will actually be our last shrine before the end fight. 
So if you do need to use a shrine, definitely recommend using it. Even if you don't, I also recommend using it. As once we head into this fight, it's uh, it's an interesting one. All right, well, here we go. So it starts off innocent enough. So essentially it starts off, we're just in here. It's a fashion show. So we got a little bit of a runway and they actually come in wearing hats, which I find is absolutely hilarious. And you can't actually hit them until they get a little ways in. You can also hop up here. You will have guys spawning up here, so just watch yourself. So yeah, they do a full-on fashion show. It is absolutely hilarious. So top hat. Now once they bring out a couple of these guys, the fighting will actually start. So until then, it's kind of a sit back and relax and enjoy the show. So here we go. So again, as you see, they are spawning up top. And it's kind of sitting here, just fighting them off for a few waves. Until essentially the finale starts. And it's the finale that is actually the the annoying fight. It's almost got like a raid boss mechanic in the the aspect where you're not actually fighting the boss itself. Rather, you're having him destroy specific objects with his own attacks, which will damage him. Oh no, just as I cast the heal. Alright, so we survived the fashion show. I'm going to quickly grab their stones. And I'm going to get them rezzed up. So when he does, it's going to kind of fade to black here, and it's going to teleport us into the boss fight. Now, this is the fight that I was mentioning here. As soon as you get in, you're actually already under siege from beholders, from, you can have mind flayers in here. Now, the way this fight is, you got to actually hide behind these giant pods that kind of look like sperm. And you gotta position yourself so that you're between, or so that the, the spermy thing is between him and the pod. So he will launch these big attacks. And these attacks will break these pods. All the while he's going to be spawning in these waves of people. So here he fires off the orb. It's gonna hit the thing. As he breaks them, you're going to need to break 
they they do give you a little bit of healing as you break them he then becomes vulnerable and when he's vulnerable you just gotta lay on him as he doesn't become vulnerable for very long so here you are with the orb Gonna fire off a second one here in a second. So yeah, this fight it's it's honestly annoying. The endless spawning enemies. The fact that the boss moves around constantly firing off these orbs at you. There he goes. Yeah, once he takes enough, or breaks enough orbs, he will kind of knock himself out, and it's just, again, a beatdown. Oh. Yeah, so every now and then he'll start this big attack. When he starts this big attack, it will spawn three cocoons. You need to destroy those cocoons as fast as possible, as if you can't, he does a crap ton of damage. And then he goes back into his standard tirade of damage. And there we go. Once he is defeated, as you see, really rough fight, and you're still taking damage because there's still guys that are attacking us. Um, it'll port us in. So honestly, the hardest part with that fight there is the fact that as you're porting in, they're already fighting you. They're already beating you down. You're kind of in a small platform. And again, with the platform, they're just you know beholders anti-magic it's really it's it's a raid boss so <laughs> we got sheer here or actually looted a couple of the items here so we got one item which is the parasitic breastplate and it has some inf you know it's okay i gotta quit doing that but we also got the mind fury symbiote which actually is not too terrible it gives you a nice little clicky effect and of course, while it's on, you do get less health and less fortitude save, but you can always pop that on just to use it and then swap it out as it does give you plus 12 bonus to universal spell power for a full minute. So it's great for a little boss fight. Just pop it on. You get that little extra damage there. And yeah, so that has been the madness chain. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys later. Have a good one all.